We begin with the saga of onsolds. The government's hoping a $300 million fix-it fund will end the nightmare for Cantabrians saddled with onsold quake-damaged houses. Minister Grant Robertson today unveiled the fund that will be handed out by EQC. It's estimated there could be a 1,000 quake homes that were onsold with unscoped damage or faulty repairs that exceeded the EQC $100,000 cap and can't be recru- recouped through through private insurers. The government also revealed it's already spent $450 million patching up houses with defective repairs that EQC signed off on. It's also ditched a test case that was due in court within days and would have decided who was liable for the botch-ups. Homeowners will now have 12 months to make a claim to the fund. Logan Church explains. Georgie Hannafin is an unsold homeowner and she describes it as a living hell. Her 300,000 plus mortgage is more than her home with botched EQC repairs is worth. It's been impossible, it's been soul destroying, it's been heartbreaking, it's been just absolutely diabolical the last six years. And that's something the government is trying to fix with its new policy, which it says will affect 1,000 homes which are over cap due to botched EQC repairs. The repair cost is estimated to be $300 million. Flanked by Greater Christchurch Regeneration Minister Megan Woods and EQC boss Sid Miller, EQC Minister Grant Robertson said enough is enough. It is time for this group of people to have an option that allows them to draw a line under what for many of them has been a nightmare scenario. This is an opportunity to access an ex gratia payment for the cost of repairs for missed damage or defective repairs. But in the middle of Mr Robertson's speech to media this afternoon came a bombshell. The much-hyped test case to determine liability will be, quote, no longer pursued by EQC. As the Minister for the Earthquake Commission, I have been advised by EQC that they do not intend to pursue the on-sold test case that they have underway. They advise me that the complexities of this case uh, are, are such that it would not give us the information we need to generalise any outcomes from it or draw any answers. We have concluded that it is no, it in no one's interest to drag this situation on any longer. The whole point of this test case, which was scheduled to be heard in 10 days, was to determine who would be liable for the messy onsold problem. If EQC, and by extension the government, lost, it could have been made liable for a repair bill soaring into the hundreds of millions of dollars. I asked Sid Miller if EQC had dodged a bullet. I, I think the most important part is we, you know, for these people that are, that are in this um, position, these, these homeowners, we've now got... Um, uh, we've now got the ability, we've now got the tools to address their problem. And I think that's you know, hugely positive um, in terms of moving forward and finding a solution to repair their homes. Today's policy, though, has been met with cautious optimism from homeowners. The cost of repairs will have to be agreed upon by both the homeowner and EQC, and that worries Georgie Hannafin. My initial thought was, great, this is awesome. So the government is stepping in and they are going to pay to have my house repaired over cap. That's great. And then when I heard the second part of the announcement, which was that I needed to go through EQC to apply for this grant, my heart dropped. And yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I think it's a good start, but I also feel like my battle with EQC has been trying to agree on a repair strategy and a costing for the repairs and I'm still going to have to do that. So my battle hasn't really gotten any easier. It's just that there is now a pot of gold (laughs) within reach that I still have to go through EQC to get to. Ellie Jones of the EQC Claimants Reference Group and an on-sold homeowner herself says there are still questions that need to be answered. Look, overall, positive. I think this is a brave move by the government and those who have made the decision. I just hope now that people uh, do welcome it and don't feel that they're having to start again. The Fix-It Fund is open for the next 12 months from today and only those who have purchased a property with botched repairs before today are eligible. In Christchurch for Checkpoints, Logan Church. 
Angela Parlane is the managing director of the Shine Lawyers who are taking the test case. She says she only found out that the case had been abandoned when she watched the RNZ live stream this afternoon. And until she hears otherwise, she believes it will still go ahead. Now, she's going to join us later in the program, as will EQC boss Sid Miller.